Hey team, today we're going to talk about static generation. We're going to talk about what it is and how Next.js uses it for dynamic web apps. I'm Colby Fayon, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. Typically when we think of a web page, or traditionally at least, we might think of something like WordPress, which is serverful, which is going to both render the HTML and serve it directly to the client. But another solution is to statically generate those files and then actually serve those as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript straight from storage. While Next.js supports server-side rendering, it also supports static generation, which is the same process of taking your React application and building the files into assets like HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. At the basic level, Next.js is gonna take your pages and if they're completely static, they're just gonna render it out as basic HTML. But Next.js also supports a bunch of data fetching methods. For instance, if I still wanted my app to be static, but I still wanted to support some data that's fetched out build time, I can use get static props, which I can trigger a function which will asynchronously go request some data and then fulfill my props for my page's component. And I can even dynamically render my different routes. So say I don't know my actual routes before I'm building the app. If I wanna grab all my pages from WordPress or some other CMS, I can use get static paths, which before get static props runs, it'll go out and I can create all the different paths that will be available for my app. And then for each one of those paths, I'll be able to run the get static props function. But either way, at the end of that process, for the statically generated files, it's gonna serve that HTML right to the browser and then React will kick in loading any dynamic bits that we want. To see what this actually looks like, we can quickly create a next app using create next app. In my terminal, I can run yarn create next app and let's call it my next app. And when it's done, we can CD into that directory and then start our development server, which we can open up in the browser and we can see our new Next.js app. So what we actually wanna see though is how this builds out. So if we run yarn build, so we can see that Next.js went through and actually built out all of our pages. So if we see this little legend here, we see Lambda, which means server, an open circle is static, and a filled circle is SSG, which is server-side generated. But if we match that up to our pages, we can see that our home page, which is what we're looking at here in the background, was built out statically, as well as our 404 page, which we didn't even touch here. If we open up this code in our text editor, we can look inside this Next.js folder and we're not going to really see much aside from some JSON files and some different JS files because what Next.js is going to do it's going to load that page up through its processes on Vercel and it's going to serve that app for you. Alternatively Next.js also supports static HTML export but if we run this command next export it's going to take that built app that we see inside of the Next.js folder but it's going to actually export it into HTML files along with its JS and CSS so that we can dump that into storage and serve it as a website. So to test this out, we can open up our package.json file, and when we run the build script, we want to also add and next export. So now if we run that command, we can see that while the output mostly looks the same, we can see at the end here, there's also an extra step where it's saying that it's going to statically export our application for us with the export command. We can also see that it says that it's meant for static only hosts. So that might be something like S3 or Netlify if you're not using any of the Lambda functionality. But now if we look back in our text editor, we can see that there's this new directory called out. And if we open it inside, we have an index.html file, which is just our regular old HTML, which is gonna serve straight to the browser. If we run the yarn start command, which is gonna run next start, we can actually see what that looks like in our browser. If we look at the home page, we can see that it's the Next.js app that we would expect. But if we look at the source code, we can see that that's that same HTML that's getting served for our site. So to test this out, we can use Netlify's drag and drop, where if we take our folder right from Finder and I drag this folder right inside Netlify, it's gonna open it up, immediately deploy it. We can open it up on netlify.app and we can see our site. So if you followed along with me, you learned what static generation is and how it applies to Next.js. We learned how it works in the build process and how we can statically export it. We even got a bonus of how we can drop that in Netlify for a really quick deploy. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. If you want to learn more about the Jamstack and the static web, make sure you check out my book, Jamstack Handbook, at jamstackhandbook.com. Thanks for watching.